Adventure. Now I'm Pudman on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the Adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with Joe and Luke from Overthrown. Nice. Here at Bloodstock. Fucking A. Fuck yeah. Does this blow your mind being here or what? It does, man. Especially, uh, you know, this is probably the biggest show that we've played so far. We're an unsigned band, a DIY band. So, nice. you know, to be able to come and play festivals like this, it's a lot different from dive bars and uh, our usual crowd. So, it's been right. fucking cool. And what an honor to be on the Sophie stage, right? Yeah, that uh, you know, that means a lot to us, you know, the the whole Sophie Foundation and everything. Um, it's such a good cause and such a tragic story as well. So to be kind of involved in that in some small way is uh yeah, it's it's an honor. Do, do you have like did you have like chills up on the stage knowing that you were on that stage and what it represents? Yeah, for sure, man. Um you know, this is my second time at Bloodstock. Uh, last time I was here, I was working. Um, <laughs> so I didn't get to see a lot of the bands. But, you know, we've I've always wanted to... This is one of those bucket list festivals, you know. So, And I think they've had the Sophie stage here since about 2018 or so. And Something it's, like that. It's always been one of those stages. It would be like, that'd be such a cool thing to do. Not just for the stage and for the festival that it is, but also for the meaning behind it. Yeah. Um, we got we got a friend in a band called Netherhall who actually works on the Sophie stage now. And he said to us before we came here, he's like, just take a minute, like while you're playing, just look out, soak it in, because it'll disappear so quickly, you know. Right. And he was right, man. Like we were we were down to like our second from last song, and I'm like, have we been up here for 25 minutes? Already? I know, right? Yeah. It's just it's yeah. the same on the radio, okay? Like I do a 50 minute long show, and most people are like, 50 minutes. I, how could I fill up 50 minutes? And then it's like at the end of the show, they're like. That was 50 minutes. It seemed like two. Yeah, yeah it definitely uh, it flew by today for sure, I found. What, what would you say your highlight of that set was? Um, I guess we can do a two-part answer to, to this one, can't we? So uh, there's, a few, there's a few things, I think. Second? Yeah, we played, we played a new single that we put out a month ago today. Nice. So it was nice to get some new music out there, see a few people singing along to the, to the new stuff. So, they, you know, they already know that. That's wild right there. Yeah. Like, that's that's totally cool when they'll sing your new stuff because yeah. that doesn't always happen. No, for sure, man. And then my wife is actually uh, a photographer as well, so she was up there with us. So just turned around, seeing her, like, give me a smile and a wink, like, you're doing good. <laughs> so nice. That was a highlight for me for sure. And I think for Luke, um, seeing some of his family here as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the mic to you. Uh, saw some of my family out in the crowd, got overwhelmed for a second, and then I was like, no, no, straight back to it. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? If I was up there, and I've been up there as a radio person and a speaker, I don't know that I want my family out there because yeah, it's, it's easier it's when a it's a bunch feeling. of strangers, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird feeling, like just locking eyes. Right? You just, yeah, it's, it was weird, but it was cool. Uh, and they must have been, holy shit, he's playing at Bloodstock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think my, my dad especially, because he's a, quite a big metalhead. Uh, we nice. Used to, used to when he was younger, so for him, he was like, he's so like proud and really see it as well that he is well if he used to be when he was younger he still is because once a metalhead always a metalhead yeah, yeah. i hate when people say i used to like metal then you weren't a metalhead <laughs> <laughs> so describe your music to our listeners but not from a genre label bullshit standpoint how you as artists describe the music so it's kind of a you know we we talk a lot through our lyrics about kind of like mental health um, things like that that have affected us and family, people that we know, and then we just throw a breakdown over it. So <laughs> nice, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's we we kind of like to say that it's one of those things. It's a little bit for everybody. So avoiding the label, it's got everything that you know you want from kind of like a middle ground of of, of heavy heavy metal. So we've got 
catchy choruses. You can sing along, but you can also throw some pretty serious shapes in the pit. Nice. Uh, and have a good time. I love it. I'm sorry I was in here, stuck in here and missed your pit. I, I caught one pit yesterday, but, you know, like, I don't get to co- leave here. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think, how can people just pit all weekend long at a festival? Like, you just feel. Oh, I know, so right? So battered by the end of it. <laughs> right? A hundred. Like, usually, I went out for 10 minutes of one gig because somebody back here was telling me, you got to check out this band. I went out for 10 minutes. Normally, I won't do it in the beginning of the day because I got to do interviews all day long. So I save it to the end of the day. Yeah. I'm like, I saw the pit, and I was like, fuck it. And I went in, and it, it was it's such a great release. People don't realize it. Yeah. The pit is not about hurting and maiming people. It's about getting that shit out of you. Yeah, it's just yeah, that release of energy. Like, we watched uh, Pit for an Autopsy on Friday. Nice. Uh, we're all big fans of them. And our drummer, he'd said to, you, uh, to Luke previously, like, if they, if they played one particular song, he was getting straight in the pit. And he just kind of like turned around, handed us his phone and just disappeared. And I was like, he's going to break his arm. He's not going to be able to play on Sunday. <laughs> right, right. Luckily, he survived. Exactly. I love that, too, because that's my thing. Hold my yeah, phone. Hold my shit. <laughs> hold my beer. I'm going in. Right. And I mean, it's it's such a great festival for artists, too, because like even the fact of bands like you and anybody that wins that like medal of the masses and stuff they don't get the opportunity at most festivals you know the guys at bloodstock the things they do for unsigned bands like ourselves and you know bands coming up through metal to the masses um we we did one round one round of metal to the masses a couple of years ago um 2020 and it all got cancelled because of covid so we missed out that that year uh we very nearly made it here uh we literally lost out on a coin toss and we, we lost the coin flip. So we didn't make it that year, but we got here eventually. But yeah, all the guys, you know, Metal to the Masses has been going for as long as I can remember since I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, I had friends in high school that came and played Bloodstock years and years ago through that scheme. And I think it's such a good thing for like smaller bands and just, you know, the amount of support that they show for, for guys like us that wouldn't normally get to do this sort of thing. Totally. Now, I have to say something that I just noticed. Your tattoo scared the shit out of me, and I'll tell you why. There's a story. That's a lemur, right? It is, yeah. The artists, give him kudos, because those eyes are on point. That was actually my wife that tattooed that. Really? So she's here, so I can... Uh... <laughs> you can tell her, and I'll tell you the story why, okay? I had a friend in uh, Florida, where I am. Yeah. His sister always has these exotic animals, and I was over the house one day, and they had a lemur and it was in the house and it was at the fr- house. Yeah, it was wow. friendly and shit. Except one day. <laughs> and we were just standing there and all of a sudden it started bouncing off all the walls, like going crazy. They got the zoomies. It came in and took a chunk out of my elbow. Oh shit. And then I'm like running out of the house. It was chasing <laughs> me. I got outside and then I'm standing outside in the back and there the sliding glass doors and it was just like stalking me back and forth it, oh, and those eyes will never leave my brain. <laughs> Shall I just turn this way so you can <laughs> Right? So you can, it's not staring at you for the rest of right? the interview. <laughs> so give your wife kudos that those eyes are on point because as soon as my <laughs> eyes lock out, I'm like, fuck. See, the only similar thing that happened to me was uh, we were staying at a friend's house in Texas and their chihuahua did the exact same thing to me but it really? ran, up and, ran up and bit my ankle but it wasn't quite like a chunk out of your elbow. It was like a, oh, what was that? Like, you know, yeah. And like see, a flea bite. The cha- chihuahua wouldn't bother me because it's like, I can take that thing. Get yeah. away from me. <laughs> that lemur was badass. And I'm like, this fucker's going to kill me. I can imagine they're pretty vicious if they want to be. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was freaking. I was like, oh, shit. And that was it for me. I'm never going in your house again. <laughs> yeah, nice knowing you. <laughs> right? So what else you got going on after this? Uh, so we've got a little tour in Wales in uh, September next month. And then we're uh, supporting a, a coward in Birmingham in October, I think that one is, 18th. And then we're just kind of like working on trying to get some more bookings, uh, you know, get some tours sorted for the end of the year. Hopefully some more festivals next year. Just whatever we can get, whoever will have us, really. Nice. So tell us uh, how basically everybody can connect you on socials, on the web. Check out your tour dates, your music, and most importantly, buy your merch. Because yeah. that's the only way you survive. It is, yeah. So... Our music's, you know, everywhere you expect it to be, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music. 
We're on Instagram, Facebook, Overthrown Music on Instagram. Um, we've got a website, overthrown.co.uk. You can get the merch on there. We just dropped some new T-shirts, actually. So uh, nice. they're a limited number as well. So hopefully a few people will pick those up. Now you have to design some T-shirts with lemurs on them. I might have to do that, yeah. Right? <laughs> It'd be so metal, right? <laughs> it can be like a vicious, like devil lemur or something that with a little bit of your elbow sticking out of its mouth perfect there you go <laughs> we got the new merch we'll going. send you one <laughs> right anything else you want to share with the listeners we haven't covered already they need to know about you guys uh just to like check out our music we put out a new single i would say it was uh this time last month called search for solace so we'd love to you know see people check that out Working on an ep at the moment just sort of steady releasing that so just look out for new music love it well, thanks for being here at Bloodstock, and thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio. Radio.